Greetings shippers, welcome back. And today, we're gonna be taking a look at another popular trope, or at least another trope that has transcended through multiple fandoms and has an intriguing history. We're gonna be talking about the wing fic. We're gonna go through a bunch of things, origins, popular fandoms, what kind of things you can expect, what kind of characters are going to have wings, is it all of them? It really varies. As always, before we get started, if you haven't already, please do follow on social media so you can keep up to date with what's coming up next, be informed when we're streaming, which is sporadic, except we do do a weekly stream Tuesdays at 9 p.m. EST. So be there and then we can chat about fandom in real time. And now let's not keep the wings waiting. Let's talk about the wing fic. Like many tropes utilized in fandom, the wing fic is older than many suppose. Now the appeal of wings is of course an old one, with mythological ties to tales of hubris and the upper limits of man's abilities, as well as divinity or monstrosity. However, while these older narratives and cultural precedents inform the wing fic, they are not always completely in line with how modern fandom uses the trope or its appeal. Though, of course, these influences linger. The wing fic in terms of modern fandom usage has been around since the time of zines, and if one includes tweaks or older forms of fandom, it has been around even longer. And while one cannot exactly date its first usage, one can track the fandoms that caused it to gain traction and become more prevalent, these fandoms being the professionals and fandom ship trend and trope creating juggernaut, Star Trek The Original Series. Indeed, winged Spock made his appearance in a few zine illustrations and stories that have now gone down in fandom history, such as a 1986 illustration in Naked Times number 12, or the 1987 story Sticks and Stones by Alexis Vegan. Through the late 80s, the presence of the trope grew, and it began to appear in 90s fandoms, as the dawn of the digital fandom age was at its advent, appearing in fandoms such as The X-Files, usually involving Crycheck. And they also entered the anime fandom as well, usually with a greater sense of ease, as it was more common for anime to already feature characters with wings. So it was less of a leap for those fans to conceive of wings suddenly entering a narrative. The internet also helped with the cross-proliferation of this fic, though it would take some time for that to become more commonplace, as in the early years of digital fandom, fandoms were much more condensed and often stuck to their own forums or fan pages. It was years before centralized fan fiction and fan art sites would begin to make their appearance. However, from there on, the wing fic has remained a constant, if not always common, trope that surges up in certain fandoms or is speckled throughout others. Having a fantasy or sci-fi element in the work can aid in the abundance of wing fic, but it is not strictly necessary. While wing fics can be found in a plethora of fan Fandoms, it has been common at the time of this recording to find them in Bandom, Supernatural, MCU, DC Fandoms, Voltron, and the like, just to name a few. In Sherlock, the trope is even given its own name. Winglock. Now the wing fic trope is not for everyone and can often be off-putting for some. One common reason for this is if the fan feels it does not match with either the source material or the fan work in questions logic or tone. Simply put, not everyone can fathom why the character suddenly has wings, which can be because of some of the most common causes of the wings developing. Some of these more oft used rationales are that the character is an angel. Either they always have been, i.e. an AU scenario, or they were unaware and had, for example, latent angel DNA or had fallen and had their mind wiped. Along the same vein, they may be a demon or become cursed with wings growing as a byproduct. It may also be caused by magic, perhaps a spell gone wrong. They may suffer from a genetic mutation, natural or induced, be that by themselves or by someone else. So as one can see, there are many ways to take this AU. Alternatively, there may be no explanation, the sudden appearance of wings being made secondary to their abruptness and how the characters react to them, as wing fix can vary in tone. Though to some they may sound like an inherently crack style concept, crack being a more comedic subset of fan work, and while the trope does lend itself well to this, especially for quick one-offs, it can be and is often played straight and dramatically or even for smut, as wing kink also exists, which can be a positive or a negative depending upon one's outlook and personal preferences. As indeed, not everyone finds this style of fic interesting, as some can come to find this trope a bit repetitive. There are also those who do not care for the AU elements or genre elements that these type of fics can add, depending upon which fandom they are a part of. And indeed, some are not fans of AUs in general. There is some light debate as to whether or not a work should be classified as a wing fic if the character already has wings. For some feel that part of the trope is the wing's sudden appearance, while others feel that if the story is focused on the wings in some capacity, for whatever reason, then it is a wing fic. And there are certain characters that exemplify this grey area, such as Castiel, who does canonically have wings, but they are not manifest in his current form. So there are many wing fics dealing with them appearing or how he deals with their presence or absence. 
and of course many fics of Dean or perhaps others cleaning them or otherwise engaging with them, not to mention all of the art and manips. While these may be different than fics where, for example, Dean sprouts wings, for fans, both are seen as equal parts wing fic. This can sometimes occur as well if the abrupt development of wings is covered in the canon or source text, but not further explored. So it is left to the fandom to truly reconcile how the wings impact the characters' lives. This is often the narrative involved while exploring Simon's dragon wings, which he manifests before losing the ability to demanifest them and carry on Simon by Rainbow Rowell. These wing fics, as mentioned, are often easier for some to understand because the canon has already referenced them. They also can lead to a subset of the wing fic, which you usually affects these canonically winged characters, that being the wingless fic. These are fics wherein a character with wings suddenly finds themselves without, the circumstances surrounding the loss of the wings often being quite traumatic, and the trope lends itself well to Wump and HC, though of course it can also be more lighthearted as well. These occur a lot with Castiel or in the Good Omens fandom, which some fans cite as the origin of the wingless fic, a kind of response to those who felt that a fic about a character with wings was not truly a wing fic, but instead just a regular fic or an extension of the already existing canon. Though, as mentioned, this is not one of the more passionate debates occurring in fandom, and for the most part, people accept if the story centers on wings, be they for a human character or not, it is a wing fic. Now, when it comes to the traditional wing fic, who are the characters most likely to be given wings? There are many options. For some, it boils down to the protagonist, simply to see how they would react. However, for others, the choice stems more from the aforementioned mythologies behind wings. Often characters will be perceived as angelic or long suffering within the narrative. However, at times it can be the exact opposite, characters appearing cold and closed off, or at times outright villainous, and the wings can be an indication of inner beauty, turmoil, or secret pure intent. Or it could be the exact opposite, depending upon the state and aesthetic of the wings. These fics also vary when it comes to how many characters have wings. For some, every character suddenly manifests wings. For others, it is only one or two, and for some, just one. A fandom that got very in-depth in terms of exploring wing fic was a fandom that got in-depth with everything pertaining to fandom, that being Homestuck, with the fan-made games Featherbent, which became so large it spawned a sub-fandom of its own. There is also, of course, the aesthetic factor and appeal. For many, a character with wings is an appealing image that can be rife with detail, and if the artist so desires it, symbolism. Some are drawn to this trope even in narrative form for the imagery it provides. Beautifully large feathered wings dark leather wings with talons, battered war-torn wings, there are many options. For some, the wing fic is a step too far and a suspension of disbelief they are not willing to make. However, for others, it is an intriguing trope that can yield many results, from character introspection, to shipbuilding, to fashioning AUs. Adding wings to a character can result in some well-thought-out narratives and art, or it can also be an excuse for PWP, or even crack. In short, it is a versatile trope, despite seemingly having little going on at first glance. So, were you aware of the wing fic? Is it a trope that you enjoy? What fandoms have you encountered it in? If you hadn't heard of it, are you planning to check it out now or stay far away? And also, have you encountered any of it in the mainstream? Because there are instances of this narrative showing up. If so, what was your favorite? As always, lots of questions, probably too many questions, but please answer as many as you can, and you know the drill. Number them as well if you have the time. I love a good essay comment. Please let me know if there are any other tropes you want to discuss here, and of course there are many more vids coming soon. There's plenty of ships, plenty of fandom, just plenty more to talk about, so please be sure to stay tuned, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. I will see you soon, but until next time, let's get to that outro. Bye bye This has been Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to all of my patrons, names on the side. And as always, stay tuned, for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.